All right, I just want to remind you of our Easter services this coming weekend, Friday morning and Sunday morning. No evening services. Friday morning, two services, usual times. Sunday morning, two services, usual times. All right, there we go. Are you ready for God's Word? Man, I'm ready to share with you this morning. We're busy with a series. We're pressing buttons, all right? And fast, last week, we were pressing the fast forward button. And so this morning, right at the bottom over there, you can see we are pressing the delete button, all right? What does that mean, pressing the delete button? And I'm telling you, you're going to walk out of this place this morning, and there are a couple of stuff that you're going to have to delete, all right? I, I think so often in life, we walk around with the wrong thoughts about ourselves, the wrong uh, opinions or perceptions at times, the wrong mindset, and we don't even realize that those incorrect thoughts are actually busy limiting us, busy holding us back. And so then we wonder why we're not really enjoying life, why we're not enjoying the people in our lives, or why we're not stretching. We're going forward and achieving everything that God has for us. And it's simply because we're walking around with the wrong mindset. It's just like a computer can get bogged down when a, a virus contaminates its software. You and I can get bogged down when the wrong, wrong thoughts, wrong perceptions start, start contaminating our minds. And so I want to show you this morning just how important it is to delete the wrong thoughts. Don't allow them in your life. Just delete them. When they come up, and they come up for all of us, delete those thoughts. Get rid of them because your life is going to follow your thoughts. And I'm going to repeat that line again and again this morning. Your life is going to follow your thoughts because it's so true, and I'll show you from Scripture just now. All right. Now, every single one of us has a picture, or you could say an image on the inside of, of ourselves and our family and, and our future. And so the question we've got to ask ourselves, what does that picture look like? Is it a picture of success and, and, and a picture of victory and, and achieving our dreams? Or is it a picture of failure and inferiority and not being good enough? Because I want to say to you, if you walk around with the wrong picture on the inside where you don't see yourself gifted and talented and, and full of potential and God has put seeds of greatness on the inside of you, you, you don't realize that, you don't see that, guess what's going to happen? you're constantly going to shrink back. You, you're going to settle for, for second place in everything that you do in your life. And so the pictures you allow in your mind, and note I say allow, because you and I allow what settles on the inside. That picture that you allow on the inside will determine what kind of life you're going to live. Imagine if you go and run a marathon or a race or something like that. And right in the beginning, you start thinking, man, this is crazy. Why am I doing this? This was the worst possible idea. <laughs> you failed before you've even started, isn't that? And so we've got to get our thoughts going in the right direction. And so many people, unfortunately, live like this. They go around thinking, you know what? I, I don't really have what it takes. I'm not good enough, or I'm not as good as so-and-so. As I'm never going to be able to achieve that. You know, I remember when my dad asked me to come on to staff. This is like 24 years ago. One of the first things I said to him, I said, I, as long as you know, I can't preach. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I can be a pastor. I can look after people. I've got a heart for people. There's no doubt about that. You know, I, I, I'll be okay. But as long as you know, as long as you're happy that that, you know, I, I, I won't be able to preach. And I honestly believe that. And it was something that he said, just, just one line, basically, that he said that, that started changing that belief on the inside. And he simply said this. He said, oh, you'll do well. You've got what it takes. And that started resonating in, in my heart. 
Why did he say that? Because myself, you know, I, I, I'm believing there's no ways I can do that. You know, I've never enjoyed public speak, speaking. It's like, that's crazy. And yet he's saying that. And so I had to make a very definite decision. I had to be intentional about deleting the wrong thoughts. And every time that thought came up, you can't delete. You know, you're not as good as so-and-so, delete. You know, you're not naturally talented, delete. I had to be intentional about deleting those wrong thoughts. And I'm telling you, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here today. You see, I found before your dreams can come to pass, you've got to start deleting the wrong thoughts and start thinking the right thoughts. You, you've got to start seeing yourself accomplishing that dream. And so whatever it is, start seeing yourself losing weight or start seeing yourself breaking that bad habit, that addiction that you've been battling with for a long time or start seeing yourself successful in business and, and what you're doing. But you see, you've got to get your thoughts going in the right direction before you're going to go in that direction. The image that you and I carry on the inside that image settles, eventually settles in our subconscious. And, and, and what will happen is it's like gravity. It will constantly pull you toward that side. And so some people have made the mistake to focus on all the things that they can't do, that they're not able to. And then they wonder why they're always struggling, why they don't feel confident, why they don't have good relationships. You know why? It's because they've had the wrong thoughts. And those thoughts, like gravity, constantly pull you toward that side. That's why it's so important that we get rid of the wrong thoughts, because your life will follow your thoughts. And so let's say you have a picture on your phone of your spouse, or for the single people, maybe your boyfriend, your girlfriend, but it's a picture of when you had your last big fight, and they are mad. Their eyes are squint. You can almost see the steam coming out of their ears. They're that mad. What happens when you look at a picture like that? What are the emotions on the inside? All right? Now replace that picture, one of your favorite pictures, with, with a picture where you're on a holiday. And were you having a great time and everybody is relaxed? And every time you look at that picture, what comes up on the inside? Listen, friends, if you will delete the wrong pictures and the wrong thoughts and start replacing them with the right thoughts, and one of the easiest places to find the right thoughts, the right pictures, as it were, is here in God's Word. Start replacing the pictures you carry on the inside with what God's Word says about you. He says you're forgiven. And for some of you today, that's exactly what you needed to hear. You're forgiven. If you've asked God for forgiveness, He's faithful and just to forgive you. He says you're forgiven. God says you are more than a conqueror. God says you're the apple of His eye. And so if you'll replace the wrong thoughts with the right thoughts, with the right pictures on the inside, man, it'll change everything. It'll change how you feel about yourself. It'll change how you interact with people. It'll change how you tackle problems and obstacles in your life. It'll change your entire life. What did I change? The picture I have on the inside of myself. Instead of seeing myself uh, in a negative light, I went to God's Word and I just started speaking what God says about me, and I start carrying that picture. It changes our entire lives. And so you may find yourself in a situation at the moment that's not great. Maybe a marriage that's not great, or a, 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 a job situation that's not great, and some kind of situation that you're really not enjoying. And you're looking at that, and you're saying to yourself, man, I, I can't do this the rest of my life. Let me say to you, Nobody said you're going to do that the rest of your life. Don't limit yourself. Don't get stuck there and assign that situation for the rest of your life. 
I want to say to you this morning, that's where you are. It's not who you are. Big difference. That's where you are. It's not who you are. Remember Moses? Moses spent 40 years in the backside of the desert before God used him very powerfully. What about Joseph? Joseph spent 13 years in Egypt, first as a slave and then as a prisoner before God used them. But those situations, those time periods in their lives weren't enjoyable. They, 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 they didn't like that. They didn't want to get stuck in that. But, but God wasn't planning to have them get stuck in that. God was busy using that to prepare them and to, and to grow them and to develop them for what He has down the line. So when you and I find ourselves in a bad situation, don't assign that situation to yourself for the rest of your life. That's where you are. It's not who you are. God's busy using that time to grow you and to develop you and just cooperate with God and say, Lord, I don't know what you're busy doing. It really doesn't make sense, but I'm just going to cooperate with you. You know, there's a man here in Maranatha, a businessman, lost his business a couple of years, a good couple of years ago, lost his business, a very successful business. He didn't only lose his business, but he really lost his joy and his, his, his zeal and his enthusiasm. You know, he was just so down after that. And, and he had all these negative thoughts coming to him all the time. You're a failure. You've dropped your family. You've, you've completely messed up something good that God gave you. And look at all of this. And So he was walking around with these, these feelings on the inside. Probably one of the darkest times in his life. And I met with him right here in the coffee shop. Never forget that. We sat down in the coffee shop, and he was just starting sharing all of this. And, and I, I told him what I'm telling you. I said, this is where you are at the moment. It's not who you are. You're, a, you're only a failure if you stay down. The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times. He gets up again. And I said to him, you're going to bounce back. I'm telling you. You're going to bounce back because you have more experience now than when you started that business years ago. You, you have the know-how. You have the ability. All of that, you're going to do well, but you've got to delete the wrong thoughts. If you hang on to those wrong thoughts and thoughts of defeat and thoughts of failure, you're never going to bounce back. And so we all have those thoughts from time to time. And I just kept encouraging him. I said, you've got to delete those thoughts. Exactly what I'm telling you this morning. And I'm happy to report, he ended up building a bigger, more successful business than the one he lost. But it probably never have happened if he got stuck in those wrong thoughts and got stuck in the fact that he saw himself as a, as a failure. You see, I want to say to you this morning, friends, the enemy is called the accuser of the brethren. His job, his purpose is not to help you. <laughs> it's not to encourage you and to build you up. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, he, he'll remind you of every mistake, every failure, every disappointment, every weakness, because he knows if you're for yourself, if you're against yourself, <laughs> you'll never achieve everything that God has for you. And so you've got to delete those thoughts. You've got to delete the, the accusing, the condemning voice of the enemy if you're going to achieve God's best for your life. You know, one of the things I, I love about the Bible, the Bible doesn't only highlight these people who live perfect lives. Look at all these people, because I think that would probably completely discourage us. Because I'm nothing like that. <laughs> so guess what the Bible does? It gives us all these people who have failed, people who've messed up. And I think of Samson and even Abraham and Moses and Jonah. And I can just keep on mentioning all these people where there's so, so, so much failure in their lives. And I think about the guy that probably messed up the most, a guy by the name of David. David lied, committed adultery, then had the husband murdered, and then on top of that tried to cover everything up. But you know, if there was one thing that David knew, David understood about God, it was God's forgiveness. Listen to what he says here in, in Psalm 86. Give me Psalm 86. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Forgiving and good, abounding in love. Listen, friends, 
If there's one truth that you and I need to understand in order to delete the accusing voice of the enemy is that, that God is forgiving, He's good, and He's abounding in love. There's, there's so much love. We've got, to, we've got to get that. And you see, settle this in your mind. We've all made mistakes. Go back to the Bible, and you just see a list of people who've made mistakes. And every one of us, we've made mistakes. And, and I think if we could go back and replay, had an opportunity to redo, I don't know about you, but, but there would be some times in my life, some specific things that I would do very, very differently. But I'm asking you today to delete those negative accusing thoughts and to embrace what God has for your future. If you've asked God for forgiveness, that stuff that you and I look at and we think, oh man, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so ashamed. You know, if you've asked God for forgiveness, don't allow the enemy to hold that against you and to tell you that you're a failure. You've got to delete that. You know, when I look at David's life, not only was he a, a great failure, he was just great in everything he did. He was a great king. He was a great warrior. <laughs> but <laughs> he says at, at one stage, uh, he says, you know, there, there are times when I'm fearful. There are times when I'm afraid. And you want to stop him and say, whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on. How can you be afraid? I mean, you know, surely you can't have any fear, David. I mean, you're this incredible warrior. He says, oh, no. He says, when I'm afraid... I will trust in him. So in other words, he had a strategy because he knew there were times in my life where I go through fear, anxiety. And the moment, the moment I have that, I turn to God. There's a strategy. I'm asking you today to have a strategy. When negative thoughts come, don't let them just dwell in your heart and in your mind. Delete them. When fear comes, delete it. When inferiority comes, delete it. When there's accusations from the enemy and you're not good enough, delete it. You cannot think thoughts of fear and, and, and defeat and expect to live a life of victory and success. It's not going to work like that. You've got to get your mind going in the right direction. Your life is going to follow your thoughts. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. So in other words, don't do what everybody else is doing. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. What he's saying is you've got to change. How? By the renewing of your mind, by changing your mind. That's what he's saying. You can change your life. If you'll change your mind, if you'll change your thinking, that's what he's telling us. And, and, and I realize sometimes it's not our own thoughts that hold us back. It's the things other people have spoken over us. Because you see, words are like seeds. If we dwell on them long enough, we think on them long enough, they take root on the inside and, and they start growing. And so... Uh, maybe you've had people who've spoken negative things over you. We all have. We all have. Let's just settle that. We've had people who've said careless things. You know, you'll never do this. Or you'll never. You're not good enough. And, and, and they look at your dreams and, and, and they say, oh, man, those are stupid or those are unrealistic. And what are they doing? Those are careless words, but they're speaking negative over our lives. And I think we've all had that. And it may have been a parent, may have been a teacher. And at the time, they didn't even realize what they're doing. They didn't even realize the, the power of their words. But if you and I make the mistake of latching on to that, and holding on to that, it can become what the Bible calls a stronghold in our lives that will completely mess up our lives. Our lives will follow our thoughts. And so the good news today is that you can delete that. Just like David says, when I'm afraid, I will. You and I need to say, when I have those negative thoughts, when I remember what so-and-so said, I'll delete it. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not going to allow that to poison my life. And so for some of you, 
Those strongholds are pretty strong because you've been thinking about that. You've been dwelling on that for many, many years. And so this coming week, you're going to go around, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> and I wish I could do that for you, but I can't, I can't. I've got to do it for myself. And you've got to do it for yourself. And let me tell you, you go around the first week, deleting, deleting, deleting. The second week, it becomes less, and it becomes less. And you get into a completely new habit, a new lifestyle. Even though they've spoken those things over your life, <laughs> it's all right. It's like water off a duck's back. Listen, any time, any time you want to move forward in life, any time there's something worthwhile fighting for, you first got to fight it in your mind. So for instance, if, if you want to fight for a messed up marriage, and, 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 and man, I, I, I need to you know, win this thing back, and I, I need to fight for this thing, or you, you want to fight a bad habit or an addiction, or you want to fight off poverty, and you say, man, I've been battling with poverty for a long time. Any time there's something worthwhile fighting for, You've got to fight it in your own mind first. Because your mind is going to tell you it's not going to change. You've battled, been battling with this for too long. You know, you, you don't have what it takes. All those things. And right there you've got to decide, am I going to dwell on it? Or am I going to delete it? That's it. That's the decision you and I face. Am I going to dwell on it? Or am I going to delete it? And so I'm asking you this morning to become aggressive against any negative thoughts, thoughts of fear and failure and, and defeat and inferiority, those thoughts have got no place in your life because your life is going to follow your thoughts. And so anytime there's something worthwhile fighting for, you've got to first fight it in your mind. You know, when Carl Lewis was preparing for the Olympics, he's a great athlete and long jump, he, he did long jump, and so he was trying to break the 30 feet uh, uh, a barrier, as it were. Nobody had broken that. That's about 9,1 meters long jump. And so all the experts were telling him and, and, and saying that it wasn't possible. Nobody can do that. And the previous record had been standing for many, many years. And so um, one of the reporters came and asked him, you know, what do you think about everybody saying it's impossible? All the experts are saying you, you can't do that. He says, man, I don't listen to that because that kind of talk is a way of settling down to my feet and weighing down my feet. And then there's no ways that I can do it. And so I, I just delete those things. They can say whatever they want to. I delete it. He went on to break the record that year. And so I want to say this respectfully, but the experts aren't always right. All right? They told Thomas Edison's parents that he was unteachable. Can you believe that? They told Albert Einstein's parents that he'd never amount to much. They told David <laughs> that he wouldn't defeat Goliath. They may have told you that you'll never have a child, or you'll never do this, or you'll never do that. I'm here to remind you this morning that God is still in control. And God's ways are not our ways and nothing is impossible for our God. Scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we've, we've got to get our thoughts going in the right direction. Am I going to believe the experts or am I going to believe God? Let me end off with this last story quickly. There was this young boy named Theodore Giesel, and he just loved drawing uh, he would spend hours upon hours just drawing sketches and, and so on. It was his dream to become an artist one day. So in high school, he took art class. And it was in that art class eventually that the teacher said to him, said, son, you, you, you're not an artist. You know, I, I'm sorry to say, but you don't really have the gifting and the talent. And, and, and you know, you may as well give this up. And so he quit, it, he quit art class right there, gave it up. But he kept on drawing just in his free time. He just loved it. And just for himself, he, he kept drawing. 
And so it was after school one day that he went to a publisher and showed them all these sketches that he'd made and said, you know, can we perhaps publish that? And they kind of laughed at him and said, ah, this is not art. Nobody would ever buy this, you know. And so they turned him down. And he went to the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth publisher. They all turned him down. He went to 29 different publishers. They all turned him down. And eventually he got to the 30th publisher and they said, all right, yeah, let's, let's do this. They saw something in it. Let, let's do this, but let's change your name. Let's put it under a different name. Here it is. <laughs> so he ended up, Dr. Zeus, he ended up selling more children's books than anyone else in history. Can I ask you this morning, are the experts telling you you'll never be able to do it? You'll never accomplish your dreams. You'll never get well. Your partner will never change. You know, you'll never have a great marriage. I want to encourage you today to press the delete button. God didn't put the dream in their heart. He put it in your heart. And if God's given you a dream, He's given you the strength and the ability, the anointing to accomplish that dream. I want to remind you, God used a teenager called David to defeat Goliath. God used a prostitute called Rahab right in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. God used a stuttering, insecure man called Moses to lead millions of people out of Egypt. God used the young man who said, I'll never preach to lead this incredible church. I want to say to you today, if you'll delete, if you'll hit that delete button and keep hitting the delete button, you allow God to be God in your life. God can do incredible things. You watch and see what God, what God can do. He's put seeds of greatness on the inside of you. That's who He is. He's put seeds of greatness in every single person. But you and I have got to do our job. We've got to do our side. And we've got to delete all those negative things. It'll be an enemy. It'll be sometimes our own failure. It's okay. We fail. You know, now, I've, now I know how not to do it. You've got to delete that. You've got to go forward. If you hold on to the negative things, it'll hold on to you. But if you delete that, you get free from that. And you can move forward and fulfill what God has for your life. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's stand. I want to pray for us. Let's bow. Let's pray. Father, these negative thoughts that we've been having, and you know what they are right there as you stand. The Holy Spirit has been highlighting it as I've been speaking. Won't you just come and confess and say, Lord, I've been believing these lies. I've been living according to these lies. I've been holding on to this nonsense. And this nonsense has been holding me back. I, I'm hitting the delete button this morning, right here in this place. And if I've got to do it again tomorrow, I'll do it again. If I've got to do it 10 times tomorrow, I'm going to do it 10 times. But that stuff is not going to settle in my heart. That's got no place in my heart. And I want to do what the Apostle Paul said. Forgetting what lies behind and taking hold of what's ahead. Lord, I know you've got good plans and good future for me. And I want to take a hold of that with, with both hands. I want to grab hold of what you have for me and fulfill everything you have for my life in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Bless you.